Despite spiraling public debt, Finance Minister declares Guyana must continue to borrow. Bandit shot dead by police, stolen items recovered. Ballots for local government elections arrive in Guyana. And in sport, West Indies beat India by 43 runs in third ODI to level series 1-1. These and more right now in this our Saturday, October 27 edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Ashley Scotland. Thanks for joining us. Despite Guyana's public debt spiraling out of control in recent months, Finance Minister Winston Jordan declared that the country must continue to borrow to meet its infrastructural needs. Details in this report. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan says he has no apology for Guyana continuing to borrow, despite already the country's public debt ballooning. Speaking on the sidelines of the signing of a $7.5 billion loan agreement with China yesterday, Jordan said loans must be taken in the absence of Guyana's own financial resources. This loan is to facilitate a national broadband project. Jordan boldly stated that since assuming post as finance minister, he had the pleasure of signing a few loans that were given from China. The Finance Ministry's Public Debt Annual Report for 2016 had shown that since 2015, there has been a 4.1% rise in Guyana's indebtedness to international lenders. A breakdown of the figures showed that a total external debt amounted to $240 billion, a 72.6% bite out of the total public debt. On the other hand, domestic debt stood at $90.6 billion or 27.4% of the total. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. The Public Infrastructure Ministry has failed to collect over $1 million from its tenants. This sum has accumulated since 2016. According to the Auditor General report for 2017, the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs received approval from the Finance Ministry to sell six vehicles. The vehicles were said to be unserviceable. At the time of the audit, three vehicles were sold, a Toyota Pickup, a Nissan Frontier, and a Toyota Costa Bus. The Toyota Pickup was not advertised for sale. It was valued at $50,000 and sold for same. The AG report said that though the Nissan Frontier was valued at $100,000, the highest bid for the vehicle was $500,000. However, the ministry refused that amount and sold the vehicle for $50,000 to a non-bidder. The irregularities did not stop there as the third vehicle, the Toyota Costa Bus, was valued at $950,000 and sold for $301,000 to the third highest of the seven bidders. The highest bidder was willing to pay $1,010,000. The ministry was in a position to receive $1,000,000 $661,000 for the three vehicles, but settled for a meager $401,000. In defense, the ministry claimed all procedures were followed in accordance with the Procurement Act. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The ballots for the local government election have arrived in Guyana and have been safely escorted to the Guyana Elections Commission. To ensure there is no interference in the electoral process, the top cop says the ballots are being guarded day and night. The second lawfully consecutive local government election is to be held on November 12, a few weeks away. To ensure the election is conducted, ballots had to be created. Guyana received the ballots earlier in this week and the Guyana police force ensured that they were untampered on the way to the Guyana Elections Commission. It was fully handed over and those ballots are under constant security. This is to ensure the electoral process is not compromised. The joint services are to vote on November 2. The local government election is slated to run off on November 12. Already, the major political parties have been talking up a storm and all have great confidence of winning in the areas they are contesting. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Among the challenges the residents of Mashabo Region 2 face as a small community is mental health. And to ensure that something is done to assist the residents, a psychologist from Canada has joined the Guyana Foundation Sunrise Centre to offer her services. Kippany Jordan reports. 
Also on board are the Guyana Police Force and the officers of the New Opportunity Corps, assisting in the fight against mental health issues and suicide among youths and adults in Mashabu, a small Amerindian community on Region 2. The founder of the Guyana Foundation Sunrise Center, Supriya Singh Boren, said, due to the work they have been doing, they will have more assistance from foreign counterparts. The work we've been doing here in Region 2 caught the imagination of a gentleman all the way in the United Kingdom. He is a commando, and I think the police officer in our midst will know that to reach the level of being a British commando, you have to have training that is off the scale difficult. And so this gentleman, by whose name is Mr. Richard Wells, he contacted me and he said, I see the work you're doing in, in the Sesequibo region in mental health, and I feel that mental health is something we really need to promote and work towards. Commando Wells is expected to arrive three months after his travel commences in December 2018. Further, Singh Budin said the assistance of the psychologist Sharon Slate is much appreciated as the partnership is now well equipped. Sharon Slate is a Canadian psychologist with 15 years experience in this field, working with children and young adults. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. you minding me business i noticed you yesterday you're there watching 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 today you're there here again why are you minding me business i fed up your nosy self yeah baby i just love your windows why are you bothering me window like you housing a window what kind of window really in your house i got some all louvers windows that i need to change louvers <laughs> Girl, I let you in for a secret, right? Peace and got a special deal right now. You go down there, you buy 10 window, you get a free bathroom window. Oh, for the love of God, try with them louvers window and go down to Peace and modernize. Peace and windows and doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink, Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Welcome back. You are watching MTV's News Update. A 60-year-old cattle and rice farm of Lot 15, Number 65, Village Quarantine, was beaten by two bandits who attacked him and his wife on last evening. Newsroom reported that the masked gunman pounced on Thirubeni Ram North called Reds and his wife at about 18 hours 45 while they were sitting on the porch. The gunman ordered the couple into the house and forced them to hand over their cash and valuables. During the ordeal, the businessman was beaten about his body and gun butted. According to the website, the gunmen tied up the businessman and placed him to lie on the ground as they took the wife to search for more valuables. Reports indicate that the gunmen carted off with a 12-gauge shotgun and 12 live cartridges, three cell phones, $300,000 cash, and over US $2,500 along with a quantity of jewelry and three bottles of whiskey. Ram North was taken to the Skeldon Hospital where he was admitted by the family opted to take the injured man for further treatment on Saturday morning at a private hospital hospital in the city. His condition is listed as stable. The police have since launched an investigation. The National Agricultural Research and Extension Institute is planning to eradicate the presence of the Carambola fruit fly in Guyana. It is seeking partnership with Guyana's neighbors to create a long-term plan. The Carambola fruit fly destroys the fruit and has a genesis from the Carambola, though other fruits are affected by the insect. Globally, Fruits lost due to the presence of the fruit fly 
accounts for 2 billion US dollars annually. Guyana is not spared from the effects of the fruit fly. It had, this has serious implications for exports because we, you, we're supposed to have um, fruits when we are exported have to be free of this carambola fruit fly. So it's a pest of what we call say, of quarantine significance. Chief Executive Officer of NARI, Dr. Odu Homnot. Dr. Homnot said that Guyana, as other countries exporting fruits, is required to report on the status of the fruit fly on an annual basis. Dr. Homnot hopes to collaborate with Guyana's neighbors to eradicate the fruit fly. So we have been working with Chuiko um, and with the Brazilian government as well, their agency there, to develop, develop programs that, they, that have to do with the management or the reduction or the eradication of the carambola fruit fly. Currently we use, um, we use traps that we have at various locations. We have them uh, on the Linden Suez Dyke Highway. We have in the Barbies area, in the quarantine and areas coming down to Mary area and quite a lot being done in regions 8 and 9. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. A 19-year-old known character was this morning killed by police ranks hours after he allegedly robbed and assaulted a couple at their Zealot East Bank Esequibo home. Police said Noel Kevin Kinsoon of 808 Zealot New Housing Scheme was shot dead during a confrontation with police officers. The items stolen from the victims were recovered at Kinsoon's house. In a statement, the Ghana police force revealed that Kinsoon reportedly entered the home of the victims yesterday at about 19 hours, held them at gunpoint, and relieved them of cash for four cell phones, two gold bands, a gold ring and a skid. During the ordeal, he reportedly struck the victims to their heads with the firearm. They were taken to a hospital where they received medical treatment and subsequently discharged. Based on information received at about 5 hours 45, the police proceeded to the suspect's house where he confronted them. Police claimed that Kisun was armed with a handgun, which he reportedly pointed at the ranks in a menacing manner. The police then shot him once in the lower region of his abdomen. Kisun was rushed to the Leon or a cottage hospital and was pronounced dead on arrival. The gold ring, which was stolen on Friday night, was recovered on the suspect's finger, while a search of his home revealed the other items except for the cash. Police headquarters, in, in, police headquarters said that Kisun was previously convicted for break and enter and larceny and had four pending matters before the court for robbery under arms, rape, and possession of narcotics. Additionally, he was wanted for several recent robberies and an alleged indecent assault of a female. The Amaranian community of Mashabo Region 2 received a host of medical supplies and chairs from the Sunrise Center. This is to ensure the patients attending the health center are duly cared for. Kipney Jordan reports. We gather here today because I want to say to you that the doors of the Guyana Foundation are open wide to everyone. Whatever resources we have, there are yours. Founder of the Guyana Foundation Sunrise Center, Supriya Singh Budin. St. Budden pledged to continue providing assistance to the health center. She further told the gathering to reach out to the Sunrise Center whenever in need. The Guyana Foundation Sunrise Center was founded in 2013. The Sunrise Center, which was created thereafter in 2016, started facilitating projects that aided in skill training for persons. Numerous students have graduated with skills in catering, electrical repairs, and building computer programs, to name a few. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Coming up after the break, MTV's Sport Update and more. Stay with us. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. 
electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Me glass, so much in this store, guys. Me confused and a price lot of. Pio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I like all you know the secret. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing. I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. The voting process. Once you have been identified as the voter you claim to be, you would be given a ballot paper that is stamped at the back, top, and bottom halves in your presence. On the ballot paper, provision is made for you to vote twice. Once at the top section where you vote for the party or group of your choice in the proportional representation component, and once at the bottom section where you vote for the party, group, or individual of your choice in the first past the post or constituency component of the election. Make your mark in the box provided on the right of your choice. After you have voted, fold the ballot paper as shown by the election official, dip the first joint of your right index finger in the ink provided, and place the ballot paper in the ballot box that is there for this purpose. You would then have to peacefully depart the polling station. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-0277-9223-9653, email pro at gcom.org.gy, or visit GCOM's website at www.gcom.org.gy. Voting by proxy. Any voter who is unable to personally vote on election day can apply to vote by proxy, providing he or she would be on duty because he or she is a member of the disciplined services, rural constables, and town constabulary. Connected with the election as assigned by the returning officer engaged in the running of a vessel for the Transport and Harbors Department on Election Day, a duly appointed candidate at the election and would be away from where he or she is registered to vote on Election Day. Voters who are blind or otherwise physically incapacitated can also vote by proxy. The applicant and the proxy voter must be listed on the same list of voters to vote at the same polling station. Application to vote by proxy can be uplifted from Monday, 15th October 2018 at the office of the returning officer in the local authority area in which the applicant is listed to vote. The deadline for submission of proxy applications is Friday, 2nd November 2018. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-0277-9 or 223-9653. Email pro at gcom.org.gy or visit gcom's website at www.gcom.org.gy. South Dakota will ignite with top riders and drivers from the Caribbean and North America as GMR Nessie hosts the final round of the Seaboard Marine Caribbean Motor Racing Championship. It's going to be an epic showdown on November 10 to 11. Adults 2,500, kids 1,000, 
Action starts at 8 a.m. Who will be crowned a Group 4 champion? Can any rider top Team Mohammed? Will Kristen dominate in his radical motor racing action you won't want to miss? Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and Ultra Lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sport Update. Virat Kohli's 107 run knock went in vain as India succumbed to a 43 run defeat against the West Indies at the Maharashtra Cricket Association Stadium in Pune today. Chasing a 284 run target, India's batting order ran out of steam and bundled out for 240. After the top order collapsed, the bonus of taking India across the line was eventually on the tail enders. Windies taking first strike reached 283 for 9 and 50 overs. The informed Shai Hope missed out on another century, fallen five short of what would have been his second turn of the tournament. A late cameo from Ashley Nurse helped set up what turned out to be a winning today. Scores in the match are as follows. West Indies 23 for 9 from 50 overs, Shai Hope 95, Ashley Nurse 40, Shimron Hetimaya 37, Jason Holder 32, Jasper Bumra 4 for 35, Kuldeep Yadav 2 for 52. India 240 all out in 47.4 overs, Virat Kohli 107, Shikhar Dawan 35, Marlon Samuels picked up 3 for 12, Ob Obed McCoy 2 for 38, Ashley Nurse 2 for 43, and Jason Holder 2 for 46. Here are the highlights of how today's match went. Could be the first wicket. Boni has taken it. Has he? That's a wonderful catch. Edged and pouched. What a catch. Was there an edge? That's the big question from the body language. That's much better. Appealed as well. He's gone to the third umpire. Where is that back? What a catch. It's in the air. And is that a wicket? Because it's Ravindra Jareja. Oh, that's up in the air. And he's taken it. Super delivery doesn't get any better. Up goes the finger. They have a review remaining in the Windies. Oh, cleaned him up. What a delivery. An appeal and has to be given. There it is. They've shot the leg before now. They've got to back it up with the review. Oh, gone. Yes, gone. Trying to run it down to third man. Dhone is woes with the bat. Continue. He goes up. And it should be taken. Yes. Oh, big wicket. Massive wicket. Goes high in the air. 
should be taken and taken. And there's another wicket that goes down. Has it been taken? Yes, it's been taken. And that's the end of it. Windy is winning handsomely. Still in cricket, a stunning spell from rookie fast bowler Akeem Jordan blew away a star-studded Trinidad and Tobago Red Force batting lineup and set up a sensational seven-wicket victory for combined campuses and colleges Marooners on Friday yesterday, catapulting them into the grand fi final of the 2018-19 Super 50 Cup. Jordan ripped the heart out of Red Force batting with a spell of 5 for 18 from 10 overs to earn the Play of the Match award as the Group A runners up were dismissed for 92 and 33 overs after they were put into bat in the second day night semi final at Kensington Oval. Dwayne Bravo, who announced his retirement from the international game two days prior, led the way for the Red Force with 27. Kijan Otley, another TNT born left hander, not out on 39, and his captain Carlos Brathwit, the Windies 2020 international captain, not out on 29, then ushered the Marooners to victory in 16.2 overs, sharing 41 unbroken for the fourth wicket. The result meant that the Marooners will face 10 time champions Ghana Jaguar in the grand final on Sunday at this venue. And finally, in sport, Guyanese Calvin Ming has signaled his intention to compete at the final rung of the Radical Caribbean SR3 Cup slated to speed off at the South Dakota Circuit on November 10 and 11. The Radical Series in its first year as part of the Caribbean Motor Racing Championships has been seen a revelation for the sport. Ming informed this newscast he has not yet been able to confirm his participation due to ongoing classes. In regards to making the provisional entry list for the Radical SR3 event back home in Guyana this coming November, I haven't been able to confirm that I'll be able to attend due to university classes which is currently ongoing. However, I am pretty excited that there's a possibility that I'll be able to drive against everyone in the Caribbean that I grew up watching as a child when I was in Guyana. I think for me it would be an amazing experience due to the fact that I've been racing abroad for four years and this will technically be my debut in a car back home in front of all the amazing spectators in Guyana. So uh, I'm pretty excited and hopefully I'll get the opportunity to do so this coming November. Should he compete, he will do so for the first time at the track. Last year, Christian Jeffrey, along with Mark Vera and Mark Maloney, did an exhibition race at the track. But this year, fans are expected to get the real deal. Based on calculations, the Radical Caribbean SR3 Cup will go down to the wire with three drivers still capable of capturing the inaugural regional title. The local importer will also provide the Guyana Motor Racing and Sports Club with a Suzuki Bellino as a pace car for the weekend's entire race program. The GMRNSC's two-day international race of champions, dubbed Ignite for 2018, also features the final rounds of the Seaboard Marine Caribbean Motor Racing Championship on two and four wheels alongside the GMRNSC's national classes. With a program of 27 races, with action for the SR3 Cup starts on Sunday with practice, qualifying and the first of three 20-lap races. Testing will be available in the days before as Radical Caribbean's technical support team is set to be on site from midweek. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's Sports Update. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Despite spiraling public debt, Finance Minister declares Guyana must continue to borrow. Bandit shot dead by police, stolen items recovered. Ballots for local government elections arrive in Guyana. And in sport, West Indies beat India by 43 runs in third ODI to level series 1-1. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Ashley Scotland. Thank you for watching. Good night.